Hello there and welcome to another video where I will be searching another algorithmic trading strategy that I found on the internet. And as you might already know, I am currently testing all the strategies that are available on the frac trade site. This way we can find out if there are profitable strategies that we can use for our own crypto algo trading bot. And in this video, I will test the Bentastic strategy from that repository. So let's open the code and find out what the intentions are of the provided code. And hopefully after some rigorous testing, we will know if this is a profitable strategy or not. If you followed my earlier posts or videos, then you'll already know that all these strategies are on the GitHub side of the FragTrade developers. They have a separate repo over there, which contains all the strategies that I have tested so far. And this Bentastic code is also available in that repository. After opening the file, we can see the following code appear. Let's take a closer look at the code, and hopefully I can make some common sense out of this, so that I can find out what the intentions are. And I'll go over the code section by section and line by line if needed. After the initial loading of the libraries, there is a section that tells us who the author is of this code. And that is a good thing to see because I always like to give credits to the original author of the code. This time it is Robert Roman, so thank you Robert for providing us with your strategy. Let's hope it will help us make some serious money with our bot. And for all the people who are using this code and get a lot of inspiration out of it, Robert still has zero account balance on his Bitcoin address, so if you appreciate his efforts, then please support him. But before you do that, better make contact with him before you deposit some on this address, because maybe he lost his private key or something like that, and then the money will be gone forever. He also shows some output of the performance of his strategy. And in this video, we are going to find out if these results also apply to my setup. Okay, following this, the familiar FragTrade basing settings appear in this strategy class. We can see that the strategy is made for the 15 minute time frame. The developer has probably optimized this strategy and got this set of ROI, take profit levels and different time periods. And the stop loss setting for the strategy is set over here. It's quite a large stop loss and you lose almost 35% if the trade does not go as planned. And this is on a pretty low time frame. And then finally the author has activated the trailing stop loss with these settings. Now with the trailing stop loss in mind I get a little bit wary because last time I used that I got some very unrealistic results back. This is due to an issue with the way trailing stop losses are handled in backtests. So keeping this in the back of my head, let's continue. This next large block of code is created for the hyperparameter optimization function. There are sections that help me determine the buy and sell settings, and in each section the optimal parameter will be found for the EMA, RSI, MFI and some other triggers. Now I will not go in depth on how to interpret these lines, but if you want to know more about hyperparameter optimization, you can always watch my video on that subject. And these optimizations are also, besides the default ROI and stop loss, I always optimize. And also, because I do not really trust the trailing stop loss, I will probably not take this into consideration. But more on that later. The indicator section contains the following. RSI and MFI are used, and the Bollinger Bands are used here. However, the author has done something interesting. He created the Bollinger Bands indicator, which has multiple bands at multiple distances from the standard moving average. Each band is determined by the standard deviation set. So in this case, there are bands that are at a distance of 1, 2, 3 and 4 standard deviations from the middle line. And you can see on the chart, it looks something like this. And then finally, the two buy EMAs and two sell EMAs will be combined to create an EMA for each time period. 
Now the buy settings are also interesting to see how the idea of combining buy EMAs and Bollinger with multiple bands will be used. The guards section here determines the primary conditions before the signal or trigger is valid. Here it says that the RSI and MFI value should both be below a certain value, which was defined as a default value in the hyperop spaces section. Also the fast EMA should be bigger than the slow EMA, which says to me that there is an indication that the price is going upward, but that the asset is bought during corrections or dips during the upward movement. Then in the triggers section, the close price should be below all the earlier defined Bollinger lower bands. It is not an if elif statement or if else statement, so all these conditions should be met before there is an actual buy trigger. And finally here the volume should be above zero. So in short, the buy signal is triggered when the asset is oversold, but is gaining momentum again to rise upwards. And here is the sell signal section. All these exit signals are the opposite of the buy signals, so I will not go over each and every line again, but you get the point I hope. In total I really like the setup, and it reflects my opinion about how a strategy should look like. There have to be some overall larger time span conditions under which the strategy performs well, which is indicated by the EMAs, RSI and MFI. And the actual buy and sell signals are triggered by the specific conditions that indicate that there are buying opportunities within this larger trend. This is the way how I learned to trade and this strategy reflects my paradigm. The only thing that gets me worried for this specific strategy is that the author has a lot of conditions that should be met and also uses the trading stop loss. This might be a little bit too complicated to get enough triggers for buying, but I might be wrong though. So let's see how this performs, I'm very curious. I am a little bit disappointed by the results of this strategy. As I said, its principles are good but it lacks in the execution. What it does correctly is that the 15 minute time frame looks like the best one indeed. Exactly what the author has in mind. However, negative results and drawdowns of almost 90% are a no go in my book. And looking at the trade statistics, we can see that the exit reasons are the main causes for losses. These exit signals can be either from the triggers or the guards that provide losing exit signals. It is only 40% of these exit signals that create such big losses and further investigation is needed to know which exit signal should be disposed of to make it a better strategy. And also the profit plot of the initial backtests show us something remarkable. From the highest point of the last bull market up until the last day of the backtest this strategy has a drawdown. And this is very strange because I thought that the EMA crossover should act like a guard and should prevent trading under these negative conditions. Also the degree of parallelism is remarkable. There are trades all of the time over the complete backtesting period and it is a maximum amount of trades active. I get a feeling that something is happening which should not happen at that tier. However, as we know by now, we can also optimize the buy and sell signals of this strategy. So I think we should give it a try to see if it will become more profitable and shows less strange behavior. We've seen some spectacular improvements before in earlier videos. Now to say that everything went smoothly when doing hyperparameter optimization is a big understatement. It is already confirmed earlier that my workstation is not good enough to optimize on these smaller time frames with the time periods and epochs I normally want to use for optimizing. But let's start first with a bug in the TA library which caused hyperopt to error out. And after some debugging it seemed that the hyperopt parameters for the EMA calculation cannot use one. So I had to change it to a 2 to make it work. By coincidence, the solution was found in an answer between the fractrate issues on GitHub. But then still I had the problem of a highly fragmented data frame in combination with the capacity issues I have. So again I had to revert to a smaller time period and lower epoch amount to get some optimal results for ROI, stop loss, buy and sell parameters. But the last time I did this, it was during the Cluck May strategy test and they proved to give some spectacular results, 
so maybe this time it will happen again. And after all, eventually I managed to get 50 epochs working over a backtesting period of a month. And then I decided it was enough to do some backtests. And I did a backtest with and without the training stop loss to see the differences this made. But in all cases I had some disappointing results. Even after the optimization I did to manage to get any profits from this strategy. Testing without the trading stop loss unfortunately did not give me much improvements. It was still losing money. Looking at the backtest results I got from the optimized strategy, we can see that only the ROI manages to make some profits. But they are all undone by all the other exit signals this code has. Now this is typically a case of having too many signals and making the strategy too complicated to work under different circumstances. I still think the idea and setup behind the strategy is good, but it should be made less complex. For example, there are 4 Bollinger Bands with 4 different deviations calculated, but the one that triggers the final buy decision is the one that has 4 standard deviations. All lower ones are automatically true, so there is no need for them I think. The way this could be improved is to test which standard deviation gives the best signals. Maybe it's not 4 but 3 deviations that gives the best signals. But that idea is for somebody else to find out and maybe he or she can provide us with their findings in the comments section. For me this is out of my scope at the moment, maybe another time. And after optimization I also got another profit chart and that finally seems to look normal again. Although I'm not happy with the way the profit fluctuates. You can clearly see that it is sort of fluctuating with the general market. And again, I thought that the guards would take care of this, but apparently I was wrong here. So what happens with this strategy in the overall league? I said the principles of this strategy are correct according to my preferred algorithmic trading principles. It has guards that prevent overtrading and triggers that sound logical. But why it does not perform the way I thought should be investigated further. I should expect that the guards would prevent overtrading. But perhaps the complicated way the buy and sell signals are constructed is its Achilles heel. In my opinion there are just too many reasons a trade could be exited. Simplification is key here to analyze what's going on exactly. Another factor that can greatly influence this result is the fact that I could not really complete my process of optimizing the parameters used in this strategy. And maybe I should have put more effort in trying to get the best parameters by optimizing them individually. But wouldn't I then be running into the trap of overfitting this strategy too much? I'll leave this answer up to you. Nonetheless, I think this is a pretty interesting way to look at the way to use Bollinger Bands. And hopefully you got some inspiration from the author's idea here, for your own trading algorithm. Now as usual, I will leave all the output I got on my Patreon site for my supporters, so that they can check and analyze my results for themselves. I also include the strategy with the unprovised and working high prop settings over there as well. I think I have done enough research for this video and will continue testing another strategy in the next one. So I'll be back with another video and blog post later. Thank you for your attention and support and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.